this week I thought I'd show you how to make the uh, fruit crates or the wooden crates like I used to put the asparagus in a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a relatively easy little project made from simple straight cuts of wood. It does require some measuring and you do need to be patient and let your glue dry. So join me and see just how easy this project is. Alright, since our box is made mostly of wood, let's talk about that first. We need a few sizes of wood. We need some one inch wide basswood that's a sixteenth of an inch thick. We need one quarter by one sixteenth inch basswood. And we need some of this eighth inch by eighth inch square basswood. I'm also using some jumbo uh, craft stick on this project. And I have a toothpick here with the end cut off. I'm using this as a tool, not as part of the box, but I found it to be really, really helpful. You need to be able to sand the rough ends off. And I just use these emery boards that I get at Dollar Tree. You get a whole huge package for a dollar, so that's always good. <clears throat> you need something to measure with, so I've got my clear ruler. You need something to cut the wood down into manageable pieces. And I'm just using my Easy Cutter today, because I'm just making short, quick cuts. You could use a miter box and a razor saw. You could use a craft knife and a straight edge on a cutting mat. Just don't use scissors to cut wood. It ruins the scissors and it's really dangerous. You also need some tacky glue. And I'm using regular tacky glue today, not the fast grab tacky. Because I found that the fast grab was just too thick and it made the it was hard to make a nice neat box. And I'm also using Zappa Gap. Also, you need a way to hold your box square while it's drying. And I'm using my metal magnetic jig. And this is how I'm going to show you today to do the boxes, however you make square corners. I know a lot of people build a little corner of Legos and use that to help them make a square corner. But you do need a way of making your corners on your box square and keeping them square. So that's really important. So let me get this cleared up and I'll show you what sizes we need to cut these pieces of wood into. From the eighth inch by eighth inch piece of wood, you need two pieces that are each one inch long. And you need four pieces that are about a half inch long. Oops, try not to drop any of them. Then from the one quarter inch, we need four pieces that are each an inch and a half long. From the one inch piece of wood, you need a piece one and a half inches long, so one inch by one and a half. And from the craft stick, we need two chunks that are each an inch long. If you miss the measurements, don't worry, I'll put the measurements for each size piece of wood and what the sizes were in the blog. So look for the um, link below the video in the description box for that. So those are our sizes. I just cut them off. I've double checked my sizing. And I've, I haven't done a really super neat job of, of uh, sanding off the ends, but I've sanded off most of the rough edges. So let me get my gluing jig set up, and we'll start gluing this together. All right, for those of you that have never used a gluing jig, the way it works is we have four nice square corners, and we have these magnetic little blocks that we hold our pieces together with. We don't need it for the first step, but we'll need it for the later steps. I have some tacky glue off to the side here where I can work with it. In our first step we're going to take these one inch wide eighth inch pieces and we are going to glue them right to the end and line it up right with the end of this one inch by one and a half inch. This is our base for our box. I'm just going to put a couple of small drops of Zappa Gap right there. That will help me to make sure this stays where I put it. Now, I've got some glue out off to the side where it won't get in the way. I've got some tacky glue there. And a little too much glue, so. 
And this wants to be lined up right with the end. A couple more drops. And this step needs to dry, but because of the um, the zappa gap in there, it won't take it long to get set up nice and hard. It won't have to, the tacky glue won't have to dry all the way. Just the other. So we're going to let this set up and get nice and firm and hard so that I can go on to the next step without worrying about these little feet moving around on me. All right. Now we're going to put the first end. I got these. These are our ends and they are going to be glued right about here and for this we need some way to keep it straight and this is also where I'm using this toothpick at. I'm using the toothpick as a spacer. All right. I am going to run some glue right along the edge that I'm going to attach to that. And I'm going to again put just a couple of drops of super glue. I'm going to start by putting this on about where I want it. Now, if you can see it, if I get this, but you can see it. I have the toothpick kind of run up here in the corner. Now push that wood. Put this. Where are you? Where's the camera? I've got this up here in the corner. And I've got this so that it's like so. This piece is resting on that toothpick. Now I'm going to get this set up so this is being held in the corner. And now very quickly, before the glue dries, I'm going to use my tweezers to do this. I'm going to reach in and pull out the toothpick. Okay, come on. Come on, let go. There we go. Because we don't want to take a chance on this being glued to our box. That's just there to space that to begin with. And now we just let this dry. This box is a lot of setting and letting things dry because we need one piece to dry before the next piece can be glued. So we'll let this dry and then we'll do the other end. Well, off camera I did I decided this was tipping a bit so I just took a clothespin and cl clamped it up to keep that even straighter. Now we're going to take the magnets off. This glue has had time to dry. Now sometimes, oh, this time it's not going to be too difficult. Sometimes you got to wiggle it a bit to get it off. There, now we have that spaced up a nice distance from the bottom and that will allow our little foot on the bottom of our crate to show. So now we do the same thing with the other end and by using this toothpick it, let's see if I can do this, see if I can work, see if I can work backwards and have you see better. All right, let's get some glue on our pieces. And if you get a little too much glue inside, you can use another toothpick to wipe that glue out of your way, out of the inside of your box before it sets up. Depending on what you're doing with your boxes, if your boxes will be filled later, that won't really matter then. All right, so I have a little small bead of glue right there. Yeah. Add three drops. I came up with these crates. These I made them because I wanted them to look like the fruit crates that um, we used to go and get produce in when I was a little girl. We would go up to over to uh, Hood River, over on the Columbia River Gorge, or we'd go over to Yakima up in eastern Washington. It'd be a nice Sunday trip. We would whole family would get in the car and we'd take off for Sunday drive and go get fruit. And it always was in these boxes. So that's kind of what I was looking for here. Let's see if I can get a hold of this. By using this, come on. It is hard to get a hold of that, but we do need to get it out because it does get a little bit of glue on it, and we don't want that to get glued. 
So now this end needs to dry, and then we can start putting our sides and our corners in. Okay, this has had a chance to get dried and set up a little bit. It's not all the way dry. It's the beauty of using the Zappa Gap. Now, see if we can get out. You have to wiggle kind of gently. Because sometimes the glue wants to stick. See, I, it stuck a little bit on the end. Now we have our box this far. So now we need to take one of these pieces and glue it right there. Our sides are going to go. Our bottom one will go right inside the box. And I'm lining them up with the bottom. That way I can put smaller stuff in and not have it fall out. Just get our glue open. And this time, since I'm going to be using quite a bit of glue, I'm going to put some glue right over here on my on my tile. Oops. I accidentally left my glue standing right side up instead of tipping it. I usually lay my glue bottles on their side. That way they're ready to use. But I forgot. I have a toothpick. And let's see. Let's start with our Zappa Gap. We're going to put just a couple of drops right there. Now, out of our way and take our glue and put some on the ends, both ends and one long side. Now depending on if you're going to leave your boxes plain wood color, you know just plain like I am, I'm not going to put any finish on these, or if you're going to age them and make them look old will depend on how neat you have to be with your glue. Because although for mine I'm not going to try and put any color on them. Um, it won't matter if I have glue on them. I can just wipe it off. If you're going to try and stain them to make them look old, you can't have any glue on them. Now, let's line this up, put this down, and we need to line it up with the edge. And there. Make sure it's flat. And we do the same thing on the other side. Drops the glue. Now, when I was making the boxes earlier for the to put in my farm stand to have the boxes ready to use, I actually was making four at a time, one in each corner of this gluing jig. It's another beauty of this gluing jig. I could go from one to another and just work all the way around. When I'm working on things like that, I like to have more than one going at one at a time. Now, get this one in. Okay, why is that one too short? There, it's too short because I didn't have it lined up right. All right, now we just let this glue dry and then we'll be back. Now I have the bottom sides are all put in. I found one that fit. I don't know what happened that one of them was way short. I think it was cut from a different project and got on my, got somehow on my work surface. So now we need to put our top ones in. And our top ones are a little bit more difficult to get in because the sides, the ends want to go out a little bit. So you will have to do a little more, you'll have to bully them a little bit. So let's see if we can get so once again I put some Zappa Gap in. I'm getting some tacky glue. Getting some tacky glue on the ends. And I like to work with this down on the flat. And hold it for a few seconds. There. By holding it for just a little bit, the uh, Zappa Gap gets a chance to really hold on. Now, again, tacky glue on the ends. And we put this one in. We want to make sure that we are lined up with the top. This one's down a little. Whoops. And this is going to barely fit, so you're going to have to 
But when you're happy with how you have it lined up, use the gluing jig to help you. When we get back, when this is dry, we can put our corner posts in, and then I'll show you something fun I did with one of these. Okay, let's see if this is set up enough that we can go on to our next step. Yeah, I think we can. So you could leave your box like this, but the old ones I'm recreating always had a little post in the corners, and I'm going to use that on these too. It also makes them a little more sturdy. Now one of these pieces of wood, if you get wood from your craft store that has the barcode on the end, like this one does, be sure to glue that to the end so it doesn't show. For this, I'm just going to put some glue down in that corner. I'm going to put this in, every, in all four corners so that we got some place to stick our pieces to. And then one side of my piece I'm going to dip in the glue. For this I don't really need the um, zap a gap because it's not holding anything structurally down. Now if you are going to stain or age this you will want to be more neat with your glue than I am. But I'm not going to stain or age this one. I'm just going to fill it with produce. So I don't care if there's glue marks on the inside of this one. And since I'm trying to do a video, it's a little harder to get in and get it neat. Because when I'm doing it for myself, I can, you know, not having the camera here, it's a little easier to get in there and, and really see what I'm doing. But try not to block the camera. Let's see if I can aim this a little bit better and come in a little more. So we're just putting this right in the corner. Now it will help to hold it together better. It'll make it stronger, but it and it makes it look stronger. And that's the main thing here. It's making this box look stronger. So let me get a bring my toothpick. big glue globs wiped off because we don't want glue globs. Glue globs are bad. Get a toothpick. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to wipe out some of this excess glue. Now when these are when this glue is all dry, we can get a look at this and see how it looks. Alright, here's our fruit crate we made today, and it's joining a couple more that I made a while back. And I think this is a fun project. I hope you enjoyed it. And just for a little something extra, because I know that the old crates were so pretty and they're very collectible now. So I took one of these crates like we made today and I made it into an old crate. I you can see what happens when you have the glue on there, but all I did was I found some old labels. Just whoops, wrong way. Just do come on, focus. There, just do a search in your favorite search search engine for antique fruit la fruit crate labels or fruit box labels, and you'll find lots of them. And then resize it to copy it and resize it into the size you need, glue it on and age it and you've got suddenly an antique apple box in this case. What the heck is on my finger? So I hope you enjoyed today's uh, tutorial and I'll talk to you later. Bye!